Two balls and two strikes. Here's the pitch. A high fly ball, left field. If it's fair, it's gone. It is fair, and it is gone. Blake Davis. I would say I grew up in a faith-based home. Um, from a young age, it was instilled in me. We went to church every Sunday, or at least tried to with the baseball schedule, but uh, it's always been a, a prominent thing in my life. Well, Kingsman Baseball is a Christian baseball ministry. Uh, sponsors faith-based baseball teams and takes players and coaches on mission trips. So Joe reached out, and um, I really felt like knowing Blake, knowing his family, uh, just knowing him personally, I thought this might be a good opportunity for him, a really good experience. We don't require our guys to be Christians, uh, uh, but we want them to understand what it really means. I have no religious background. I had never really been to church. I uh, had a call with Coach Hudak, a uh, couple actually. I told him like, you know, I'm not gonna go into it with like a closed mind. Like I thought it would be a good opportunity to like see what it's about. I think it's great for those kids who want to pursue um, you know, a summer where they get a chance to grow in their faith, um, have a chance to go to some different places. Um, like last year's team, he was able to take to Alaska and Dominican Republic. I had heard uh, stories about the Dominican, just that they were poor, didn't have a whole lot. Um, I really wasn't sure entirely what that would look like until I got there makes you a little sick to your stomach. Obviously the villa that you stay in is really nice, but as soon as you leave the villa, you know, it's like shacks. You see a lot of things that here would not be considered a norm, but they're just another day in the Dominican Republic. When I think of Blake and the Dominican, first the first thought that comes to mind is we went, we went to the girls' orphanage. Porque somos la persona que siempre estamos aquí, brindándole apoyo. Riding on the bus there, like you really, truly did not know what to expect going in. Coach told us like they love us and they always run and jump on you. And I was like, oh, okay. I mean, they're, they're gonna swarm on you. And somebody's gonna grab your hand and, and you are gonna be theirs for the rest of the time that we're there. And, uh, in Blake's in Blake's instance, there was this little girl. Gabriela is the oldest one of three sisters. She has two more sisters here, um, Liriamni and Nashla. Well, she was uh, four years old, um, an adorable little child. Um, she really just stood out from the rest of the pack. I don't I don't know why. She loved him, literally loved him, like. You know, they all like love us, but like she loved him. It's the Blake Beavis takeover. Wait, talk to me, what's going on right here? Man, we just out of here. My girl Gabriella. Making it happen. Let's go. He spent the whole time with her. We're playing kickball, you know, and he's over there sitting in a tree with this girl on his lap, just having a great time and just playing with her. And uh, it's amazing to watch, you know, a, a big kid like him. You know, and his, his heart was just touched by this little girl. I have no idea what she's gone through in her life. I wish I'd have a chance to ask her and wish I could understand her. But I, I know something caused her some sort of trauma to be in that situation. So uh, doing whatever I can to help her, even in the, what, two days that I saw her, um, I hope I could have made a tremendous impact on her life as much as she would on mine. Going to the village was a truly eye-opening. Um, these homes, I mean, here we would probably hardly even call them homes. They're just like a small little shack pretty much and they've got people in there up to like six um, adults almost, like living in this small little shack. To witness that and to also provide food for a couple weeks for those people uh, while doing that was, uh, was, was a really, uh, really awesome experience. And your name we pray. So we were passing out food the first 
um, time I'd been down there in a village. And so when we, we would give them the food bag and then someone would pray for them. I had never even prayed for myself before. So I was like, I, don't, I can't pray for somebody else. Bert Camper, who uh, played at Towson at the time, I gave him the food bag because I had a food bag. Whoever gave him the food bag prayed and I was like, no, no, no. And they were like, yeah, you're doing it. He was like, yeah, you're doing it. So he basically like made me pray. And I was like, oh gosh, I don't know what to say. I don't know what this, you know, I was so nervous, but I did it. And then after, like, I felt like, a, like so happy, like such a joy. I didn't realize it at the time. By looking back, I was like, you know, that's definitely God. Something that I wasn't aware of and something that I'm clearly aware of now is just how great the people are down there and just how happy of individuals they are. The Dominican um, always bring love and attention to the people who come from the other country. Uh, we are wonderful. <laughs> Playing baseball down there was great. Um, you run into these guys that are signed to MLB teams at 16 years old. Gabriella and the kids at the orphanage got to come back to one of our games. <laughs> Those kids would come in our dugout, so we pretty much had like a built-in fan base in our small little dugout. They came to one of our games before we left and she was all over them in the dugout. And this, you know, it was just awesome. She was still latched on to me at that point, and I had to go play first base, and she was uh, still by my side. And I was like, I had to ask uh, Coach Hudak if I could get taken out because I didn't want her to get any um, injuries or anything. So I just ended up being taken out the rest of the day and just spent the rest of the day running around with her throughout like the field to the right or out in the outfield somewhere. Our buses were kind of going in the same direction. So we were going back to, to the, where we were staying, and they were going back to the orphanage, of course. And we kind of hit a fork in the road where we had to go right, they had to go left. They were hanging out the window and waving goodbye and see you next year and whatever else. So it was one of those things where it was just like, man, like they look forward to that so much. And and I'm sure they're counting down the days in, until the organization is back. That trip, it changed my whole life. It changed uh, every everything that I do to this day. Um, I think a big word in my life that I've learned from that trip is perspective, knowing that things are so much worse in other scenarios and other situations and just going about life in a way that makes the most of what you have and being where your feet are um, and truly just being happy knowing that um, there's places where everything's way worse off than what you have in here. I think the biggest thing that we've been able to, to help guys with is is understand that uh, when baseball is over, and it is gonna be over for all of us at some point, you know, what type of husband are you gonna be? What type of father are you gonna be? You know, what type of a friend or, or employee or employer are you gonna be? You know, we just asked guys if they wanted to share a little bit about, hey, what, what, what's your next step? And Blake was actually one of the guys who, who spoke up uh, and he said one of the things that he wanted to do is he wanted to become more of a leader on the baseball team spiritually. To be able to lead something and to be able to preach on something, I think takes a whole nother, whole nother level of confidence, whole nother level of uh, understanding about the Bible and the things that go along in your faith. But I think that's something that God's calling us to do is uh, preach his word and be able to spread faith, not just have it in your own life, but be able to share it and spread it to others around you. I mean, that's really why we do what we do. You know, I love baseball, I love coaching baseball, but uh, you know, w when you compare baseball to eternity, there is no comparison. Eh, claro que sí, ellos pueden venir siempre. Nosotros, un grupo que tiene tantos años visitando el orfanato, ella es como parte de la familia. Las chicas siempre y los chicos siempre preguntan por ellos que cuándo va a venir el grupo. They are our family. See, in our country here, we have so much, and we take it for granted sometimes. When you go uh, on a missions trip to be able to help people, serve people, there's a great blessing that comes from that when you help others. And I'm thankful for that.